agenda is public comment. Is there any public comment tonight? No. Um, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, we're going to pull out the fourth item on the consent agenda, which is the new teacher contract. And we'll take that up after the executive session tonight. There have been um, a couple of additions, which are new teacher contracts. Is that what the additions were? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda minus the new t the new teacher contract and with the um, the uh, new teacher hires added tonight? Motion to approve the consent, consent agenda with the additions mentioned by Bridget just now. And minus the. And minus the uh, contract negotiations. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Because we approved the tax anticipation note, we need five signatures on that. So I'm gonna, just going to be passed around here. No, I apologize. It's on way. three separate pages. Oh, three so. pages. So when it comes to you, you could sign it. <coughs> okay. Learning focus. Oh, wait. Actually, before we get to that. Um, which is appropriate because we're going to turn it over to Emma and Hope. I did want to say that um, this is our last regular school board meeting of the school year, which means it's the last time that we'll be joined by um, two of our favorite graduating seniors, Emma and Adam, who's been with us for years. So we wish you guys all the very, very best. We miss you very much, and thank you for all the service that you've done for the board. Anyone else want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I second that. Thank you too so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Turn over to you. So we're just going to format it with celebrations and concerns. Um, I can start. Um, so we recently had the Empower Vermont Festival um, in this very courtyard, and it was. Um, sponsored by MHS Club Action, and the proceeds went to the um, sexual assault crisis team of Washington County, and we wanted to give back to a more like local group, and we felt it was really befitting of the name Empower Vermont. And we had music and some speeches, and Emma was also there, and so I know that she had a really good time, and people <laughs> tabling, and, um, yeah, it was, it was just a good way to bring the student body together a bit. And um, also, can I just yeah. add that the students that worked on the Empower Vermont Festival worked so hard, That's and true. it was a small <laughs> group of students, and I thought it was like so much fun. So congrats to them. Oh, uh, and so the end of spring sports is officially tomorrow, I think, mm -hmm. um, with, and that's ending with the uh, finals games, which both our varsity ultimate teams are participating in uh, here. So that's really exciting. Um, Emma is on the girls' <laughs> ultimate team. She's a star. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, And also, all of our other teams have done really well this year uh, in spring sports. So yeah, just congratulations to them as well. <laughs> I heard you had a pep rally for spring sports. Yes, we, that's what we were did. Also that was the next <laughs> item, actually. Yeah. Um, so I, it sort of took so much effort to plan it, but I know that some members of student council worked like really, really hard to try and organize the pep rally, and it was outside, and it was by the track, and uh, I know that our school doesn't. Our school had a pep rally this past year, and it was pretty small, and. So it was short, and so I know that like we're really trying to build up our school spirit as a way to just bring the student body together a little bit more and get them out for games and just to like make them feel proud of going to MHS. And so we had um, a relay race and tug of war between um, faculty and staff and students, which was really interesting. And I we <laughs> um, I had fun. Emma had fun. Everyone else seemed like they were having fun, so I'll just say that. Um, yeah, it went it went really well, and we even like decorated the hallways a bit for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and today was senior day of service. That was a lot of fun. I know that 
some people got injured here and there. Just some, just like some, some, just me. It was just some me. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's just a band. It's, it's okay. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but uh, we cleaned up the basement of the elementary school. I uh, haven't been there in a long time. That was really fun. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, and you know, the custodial um, staff there, like I just have so much respect for everything that they do. That was a lot of work. And um, they were there like loading up the trailer and running to wherever they're taking all of that stuff. So that was, that was awesome to see. Um, and there was, fi uh, the fire was crackling. <laughs> crackling and pizza was baking and it was great, yeah. Um, and tomorrow after school, something that, uh, it's a partnership between, um, I think it's community-based learning and some of the classes at MHS and the Vermont Folklife Center and another organization, I forget the name, but um, it's, called the Blueprints Project, and I'm part of it, and um, I'm one of the only not sophomores who's a part of it, because it's mostly sophomore classes, and then orchestra, which I'm a part of, and we basically had to schedule a 30-minute interview with someone in the community, and it was more of a casual sort of interview in which we would just choose a topic we wanted to talk to them about, and then just sort of connect with community members, and I was able to interview the legislator that I interned with, Molly Burke, and it was really, it was just really nice to be able to connect with her on her upbringing and um, her career. And after we had those interviews, we turned, um, we, we sort of turned them into art, and it was based on what class you were in. And I know some people made maps, sort of, um, like their art project was maps. And for me and for orchestra students and some other students, we had to make a song on GarageBand, so we had to make music. And so the exhibition for that will be tomorrow night at five, I believe. I'm not entirely sure, but it's tomorrow night. And it'll be in the library in, I think, Miss Squire's room. So that's exciting. You're on the art walk. You're in the book on the art walk for tomorrow. So, you know, the art so you go to various places and you're on the <clears throat> oh. main Oh, that's really cool. Oh. The blueprints. I didn't, okay, cool. I think that's on Montpelier Alive's website. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. You're there. Good to know. We're there. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Um, yeah, we'll transition to Okay, so we just have a few concerns. Um, I'll just talk about some of the middle school concerns that I've run into um, during play mentoring. Um, so I don't have any hard data to like present to you. I don't have any like surveys or anything, so I can't say that this is like an, a shared experience. Um, but I do know that, that, that there's some concern about the middle school bathrooms, um, that the gender neutral bathrooms uh, took only the girls' bathrooms. Um, and that the boys' bathrooms are all still like where they used to be and everything. And if a girl, say, feels uncomfortable going into a gender neutral bathroom, which is, which might happen, um, then she would have to walk to wherever that is in the school. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of something that Michelle said a long time ago at another meeting about a concern that a parent, I think, had about that. Um, and yeah, and a student brought that up with me, so there's that. Um, and also, at the beginning of this year, uh, there was a, there's some resistance against the dress code at the middle school um, with uh, the, I, th I think it's, <laughs> uh, there's some critiques about how it targets the female students or female identifying students more heavily than the um, male identifying students, uh, whether that's with like their skirt length or their spaghetti straps, um, stuff like that. Um, and basically, I think it would be really great to have some MSMS students come to a school board meeting and talk about that because uh, it seems like something that they really care about. In fact, they even started a petition uh, that got a lot of support 
uh, to change the dress code, but they ended up not presenting it to the administration. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and then moving on to Montpelier High School. Do you want to talk about start? this? Sure. I know that uh, some some recent freshmen, I think they brought it up to Emma or something? Or how it, yeah, yeah. Some, some freshmen um, who had just recently been through the health class at MHS had some concerns about it and I I think they're concerns that I share and Emma might share just in that it it's hard to explain but I just think it needs a lot of work and I think Emma can talk a a bit more about that uh yeah what we discussed so uh one of the places that I uh, talked about this. I talked about this with uh, Club Action, actually, which is an activism club, so that's, um, yeah. Uh, basically, they were concerned about uh, the curriculum not being adequate, uh, just um, especially in terms of sex, edu sex education and um, inclusivity and like equity mm -hmm. um, around gender identities and sexual orientations. Uh, which is stuff that I we have discussed on uh, the board, I believe. Um, and so I'm just kind of like echoing that because students seem to want to prioritize that, mm -hmm. uh, or they want the school board to prioritize that. Um, yeah, I feel like it's been, there's sort of a general consensus that if there is a class at MHS that needs improvement, it's health just from people who've been through it years ago and are people who just went through it, like the freshmen. And just to add, like when I went through it, my main two concerns were sort of inclusivity in terms of different identities that are represented and um, have to be educated in that space and also sex education. And I think it's lacking from what we ha have right now. So room for improvement. Um. So yeah, any questions are welcome. Any questions for this guest? <clears throat> no questions, but we did spend, I want to say, an hour at mm -hmm. the last meeting hearing from mm -hmm. a couple of parents and from uh, Mike McGrath and uh, the other Mike. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, don't want to over, but isn't Mike working on the health curriculum now? It's our the next, curriculum director is working on it. Okay. Our next meeting is about health, too, isn't it? Or, the next meeting? Isn't our, our retreat? Is, retreat. Has a... No. No? I thought that was one of the things we were talking about. No, one of the actions that come, came out of um, the admins talk after last board meeting is that one of the things we'd like to do is do what a uh, health index that we have, um, and that's a much longer process. So we're looking into how do we start that, who do we need to do that with us, and all that kind of thing. We were talking about an asset map to show. Which is going to do that. It yeah. does the same thing, except it's already a published mm -hmm. document. It goes further into what we would probably do is just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, that's what we're on to. Cool. We just need a little time to gather it. What is an asset map and a health so, index? So an asset map is, so a lot of times in community development, people talk about communities' needs. And an asset map is a different way of uh, approaching a community problem where you start with what do we have? You know, where, what are our strengths? What are our assets? You know, what are the resources that we currently have available? Um, and not necessarily within an institution, but sur surrounding an institution. So a community, what are the community's assets? And in that process, Oftentimes, when it's used as a community development tool, you realize, oh, we have all these resources, but we're only engaging this resource and this resource here, but we could be engaging all of these resources. Or, oh, there's a gap here. This is where we, we really have a need kind of thing that helps um, decision makers and uh, implementers uh, and communities address challenges. It can also help you sometimes focus the community's efforts on real problems versus perceived problems if you if you can map it mm -hmm. out because you might like we might be putting tons of resources into an anti-smoking program and if we did an asset map we would be like hey we're the school in the state with the fewest smoking kids maybe we should put our efforts somewhere else 
yeah, not into our strengths. What we have is from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It's the School of Health Index, and it's a self-assessment and planning guide, so it will take us through a protocol, a process. Um, so right now it's a little packed with to-dos. <laughs> um, everybody's so this is this is marked for summer work. But like Barry said, is working on the health curriculum mm -hmm. for K-12. It's on the docket. Um, so one of the things that Mike said to me after the board meeting was, we don't have a reading curriculum, and we don't have a writing curriculum, and we don't have a math curriculum. Like it's it's on the docket to to work on, and he's meeting with teachers, um, and we have a lot of curriculum work to do. It's not a but. It's a an <laughs> and. We have a lot of work to do in that area because we have very little, especially in the K four spectrum. On the middle school bathrooms, there is a big bathroom renovation project going on this summer, right? Yes. But that will mean more gender neutral bathrooms, I think, right? Yes. I don't know specifically which bathrooms they're concerned with, and, uh, and I, but I, I think that and you're right on one of the floors. I think what they did is they took the boys, they left the boys, and they turned the girls into a gender neutral. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's yeah. the one by the gym. And that's yeah. getting that one's getting renovated to an all gender. As well as on the ground floor, but there will also be a, an individual stall available. Individual but one of the things that Pam had said at a previous meeting, and I just want to confirm this with you, Andrew, while you're here, is that there still will be um, for those students, uh, female identifying or male identifying, who wish to use a female or male. Um, restroom. Those will still be available. Correct. It's not all going to be gender not neutral. Not on that floor. So on one floor, it'll be, be all gender neutral. But it will be a single stall. I mean, a single bathroom. Correct. So they can go into the single bathroom. Um, I I don't know the individual. You know, I don't know the building well enough that there's an individual room, top, down a hallway kind of thing that I, I can't. I don't have a plan in front of me. Uh, the way that they'll be set up is the <clears throat> the restrooms will be a large restroom. You'll actually go through a solid door, so you, you'll, you'll enter into the room, there'll be a row of sinks, common area sinks, and then you actually go through a solid wood door into a toilet stall, but it's more of a room. The, the walls go up to about eight feet, seven and a half feet. And then, um, and so those will be all individual, and then there'll actually be a handicap accessible, solid, freestanding room that will be, it'll be, it won't be gender identified, it'll just be a standalone. Will there be gender identifiable bathrooms still at the school? There may be one or two, but not in the, not as the common, the used ones. Um, and the only reason I say that is there may be, you know, in a library or something, a, a small restroom tucked off to the side. But when I think of the sort of main restrooms that will be used, no, they'll all be gender neutral. <coughs> I have to pull out the plans and double check that. But I've heard those same concerns from some parents and their kids too. Mainly, um, actually, and this is all anecdotal. It's just been the parents of some girls who feel uncomfortable going into a gender-neutral um, setting at the middle school. I have to say, as a woman who often has to wait in long lines for waiting for a women's toilet to open up, that I find it a little, my whole life, the idea that somehow I'm going to lose even more stalls to boys who want to use the gender, <coughs> gender neutral bathroom, a little bit of a lack of planning. If anything, women need more bathroom space than men do. So that the women's room is the one that was taken up to become the gender neutral. They're all going to be there. There's one on a, on a floor. Okay. And I, and I honestly don't know how many years ago that happened. I think it probably happened three, four years ago. Okay. Guess. All right. This was a decision that was made before this school year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Must have missed it. <laughs> it. It's because of the urinals, too. Oh, I understand. You can't make the boys yeah. neutral. There will be some individual bathrooms that are around the school. So. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All 
right, the, um, the next issue on the agenda is the discussion of the mud lot. We have Grant Geisler and Andrew LaRosa joining us, the business manager and facility director, to talk about the mud lot. Don't go there. No, it's okay. It's okay. Take your side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good evening. Um, yeah, so this is both of us because uh, kind of a two-part thing. Um, what I'm technically asking for is a fund balance adjustment. So I'm asking for a motion eventually to increase the committed fund balance to $664,115.70. That is an increase of $350,000. That $350,000 is what I would like to commit and set aside for a project to actually replace the mud lot with an actual paved parking lot. Could, um, um, and I, it could be either one of you, but just like a 60 second explanation for the public about what the mud lot refers to. Right, so as you're pulling into the high school, um, kind of on the outside of where the auditorium is, there's a kind of a parking lot, but it's not paved, it's just dirt, some gravel, but we call it the mud lot because in a lot of seasons, that's what it is, just mud. Um, so it's used a lot um, for overflow. It's also used right now for the bank. The VSDCU uses it um, for their overflow parking. Um, it's been a discussion for a long time that that is an eyesore, needs to be paved and look nice. Um, for a while, we were in discussions with the SECU because they were thinking about making it a capital project that they would pay for and it would be this long-term agreement would have to work out because it's our property that they would be doing this project and so that would give them the ability to use it for several years for free. Um, but they, VSCCU delayed their project and now um, it's sounding less and less like they're really going to move forward with it. I think they've got other priorities. Perhaps the parking lot's more expensive than they anticipated. Um, so right now there is no immediate plan for VSECU to, to do a parking lot project anymore. So we could just keep waiting, but it's it's been something that's needed attention for a long time. So I was looking to set aside $350,000. In your board packet, there were a couple of, of kind of drawings. Well, one was a, a couple of pictures of the mud lot, what it looks like now, but you all have seen it and you know what it's like. Um, the second kind of diagram was this big uh, parking lot that was initially planned that would take up almost all that green space. We're not talking about doing that. The last page was kind of what VSECU was considering, which is basically paving the same kind of footprint as the mud lot, not encroaching on the green fields. That's more like what we're talking about doing, but I'm not here to tell you that we have a firm plan set in place. We need to figure out what we're going to do. Uh, it would probably be more like the VSECU plan. Sure. Um, but credit you know, but, um, but we still have to kind of go through some of the details and figure that out. But the reason why I'd like to commit money now is in order to do that work, we're going to need some design and engineering money to start figuring out exactly what this is going to look like. Um, so if we set that money aside, it would be available. We could have some seed money to start with the planning and development of it. And then at some point, you will all get more information about what we actually plan to do when that time comes. So like I said, for now, I was just looking for a motion to increase the committed fund balance. We still have over 2.4% of our uh, budget is fund balance, uh, uncommitted fund balance, so we're still in great shape. Um, I've talked to a few of you, especially on the um, finance committee, that I anticipate this year we're going to add to the fund balance um, as a result of how we finish up on that team. So I think we're in good shape. This makes a lot of sense to me, but obviously the expert is to my left, so if you have questions about the law itself, um, I'm sure Andrew will be pleased to speak with you. Do we want to hear from Andrew? I, I like grant governance, so okay, I mean, we'll go to I'll, I'll answer. Start with Michelle, Andrew, yeah, then I'll look at that side of her. I'm just going to recuse myself from the conversation because 
Friends of the Winooski, where I work, is working with the district on the stormwater management of this lot. So that that's that gets into a question that I had, which is, you know, we're adding impervious surface to an area by a waterway that goes into Lake Champlain. Do you want me? Do you want me to answer this? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, how? Are, yeah. I think that um, I'll, I'll take the burden here. I, I think that by most uh, consideration, that would be considered impervious surface. We've been driving on it, compacting it for the last. Oh, right now you mean? Yeah. And if yeah. it was ten years ago, I would have absolutely said there's no one in the state that would call that impervious. As I get the understanding, they're loosened up a little bit, but still, I think on first blush, people would say you've been driving on it for five years. That's impervious. Okay. Now I also understand that. Um, the state is also more flexible about regenerating. It used to be once it was impervious, it was never going to not be considered that. But my understanding is that now you could actually fluff the soil back up and, and uh, turn it back into impervious surface. But you'd have to stop driving on it, right? Yes. But you'd have to stop driving on it. So, so what, what, is, what is the need for this? Because we have, we have parking lots all around the school. What, what, is, what is the need for this lot? You know, when I go by in the day, it seems like, a lot of folks who are doing construction are using it right now, but I, I don't necessarily see that lot totally full reg regularly, but this is anecdotal, so that's why I'm asking. I would say that, and we haven't done a formal study of this, but again, anecdotal, in talking with folks that are, uh, last I talked with Steve Avery, he said he got about eight folks from the credit union who were parking over there on a regular basis. So on any given day, I, there's probably 20 people parked out there when construction's not happening. About eight of those are probably uh, credit union folks. Uh, the number of students and faculty is very small, four, five, six maybe, when everybody's coming through the front door. The balance are people using the bike path or using the green space. Um, so we're talking about $350,000 plus ongoing maintenance and repair over time. Not that we don't have maintenance and repair right now for potentially 12 people who may or may not be uh, using the school. I'm, you know, I, I do see our schools as a public asset, um, but also there are state, there's a state lot, Department of Labor that generally has quite a bit of spaces. Um, there's also a rec field area that is right near, um, right near where the bike path is. So it seems like VSECU, they're using about 40% of those spaces. Do they pay us anything? They pay us a nominal fee of? Uh, yeah, it's a very small amount of money, something like that. But that's based on the fact that it's a mud lot. Um, and I do, I, there are times when there is no parking lot out here. Um, in, our, in the paved lots. Mm -hmm. I, I can attest to that myself because I've come to work from, like, if I leave and come back, there are no spots. Um, so there is a need, and I wonder about as we get more high school students from the Roxbury, if we're going to end up having even more students driving. Um, so, yeah, right now it's not an urgent need, but we're also not talking about putting a parking lot out there with 100 spaces. We're talking about just probably about Maybe, maybe 40 maybe. spaces, yeah. maybe. Um, so it's it's not adding a lot of parking spaces, but one way or another, something needs to be done with that. It's, it's the first thing you see when you pull yeah. it, and it's, it's atrocious. Well, I was going to say it's actually used quite a bit on weekends of various mm -hmm. things when there's something happening. Events, so if we're not going to pave it, let's mm -hmm. put grass on it and prevent people from driving on it. It sort of has to go one or the other because yeah. it's so ugly. I certainly like the green space approach. Like when I look at these drawings, my question is with regard to the three hundred fifty thousand dollar parking lot. Absolutely. You know, if it. if we had if we put trees, if we had an, another recreational field there, had walkways that weren't muddy in the winter um, or spring fall. We, um, and we we've, we've talked about that piece because when the, when the credit union pulled out, the three of us were sitting in my office. It happened to be a day that that lot was closed because um, it's closed for several months of the year because of ice or mud, one of the two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we couldn't find parking. There are multiple people coming to the high school that couldn't find parking because all the parking spots, especially in the winter when the snow piles and you lose, 
additional parking along the drive there. At least we did this year. I don't know if that's always a common thing because of how it's planned. <coughs> Do you know what I mean? The, the, where you parallel park? Mm -hmm. um, and so <laughs> it may have been that we, we went in this direction because on that day, Multiple people were complaining about no parking, <laughs> but that do, day is common in Vermont. Do we do anything to encourage carpooling? Like at the state level, for example, they have like the Go Commuter Challenge, and like you get discounts at local restaurants and stores and things like that if you commute. Um, do, we probably don't do anything like that, right? To cut down on the number. No. Of and whose students. job would you like to make that? <laughs> like you like to add that on to? <laughs> it, that's gonna be difficult. It's yeah. gonna be a difficult sell. Mm -hmm. I think. I, I, I will tell you that even if we, um, something needs to be done. Right. Whatever we do is not going to be cheap. Mm -hmm. right. If even you say like let's turn it into that grass field, that's still going to be probably well over $100,000. Um, just because of having to get everything out of there, all the issues you have with, with uh, what's the with urban soils, and I, it's still, it may not be 100000 yeah. but it would, it would still be a sizable amount of money to, to convert it back to green. Yeah, we're not going to just put a chain up right. and grass will sprout. No, I figured but that. I think, but I, I, I would agree with Grant that to, to make it look good, we'll have to go in there, we'll have to scrape six inches of soil off, and that will probably have to go up to Coventry and we'll get some topsoil and I do put some couple trees out there, but um, I'm thinking it's 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 good. It's not we're not going to just pull it out of our pockets, but it's going to be probably even closer to the thirty thousand dollar range, in my guess. And if you if we do decide, all right, we've got this green space and we've got new sculpture going out front, and mm -hmm. we want to do a few other things that you know that that scope can grow or shrink. Andrew, I don't know the answer to this question because we didn't dive into the green space idea mm -hmm. very much, but. Would you still have to have a fire lane? We would still have a fire lane. That's true too. So we would we would have to construct if we wanted that to be green. Yeah. So, so you, that's where that comes. Could you have a walkway that connects the school to the path there that was large enough? We've talked the, about that, and the, the my concern with that is that field gets used for start smart baseball mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Once you put a strip of asphalt through or a strip of concrete through, you kind of ruin your field. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but if we were going to do with some sort of engineered grass path for the fire lane, I yeah. think absolutely would be it'd be easy enough to do that sort of treatment at least, you know, for the first 50 feet into the site, and you know, and, you know where, before traffic starts to um, you know, kind of lessen a little bit, people start to go in different directions a little bit. But that's a that's a good point that um, some sort of structural grass out there structural system underneath the grass would be a good idea to help make that path a little more um, sturdy. My, my 5,000 foot perspective is I'm sympathetic to folks uh, who are looking for parking spaces and, and have things to do throughout the day and come in the middle of the day, especially the folks who are working here um, and our students. But I, I definitely do think in this, this age of um, climate change, uh, when the state's actively seeking to reduce its uh, carbon footprint and transportation and heating or major areas. I just kind of question if we have $350,000, if spending it on a parking lot is the best use of that money, when maybe it could be going to something, projects at the middle school that we've heard require a lot of attention and those types of matters. So. That's my general thought. I don't want to take up too much time from everybody else because I saw questions over there. Sure, I'll just ask yes. a quick clarifying question. So when the credit union had their engineers come up with this plan, this study, what was the price tag? It was about $300,000 in construction. <laughs> and I think the engineering fees were going to be around twenty-five, dollars and then I, we juiced it up a little bit for permitting and things of that nature because you don't really end as part of the overall storm water. And have to get a little trip, a little more creative than what they had originally budgeted on the back of an album. But three fifty could get us that something close to it, yeah. Okay. And the other thing is, we, we did the credit union pays us a very nominal fee now. When they were debating doing this project, because they were going to pay for capital expense, they were going to use it for free for years until three hundred thousand dollars was kind of equaled out. Um, but if we do this ourselves and they still want to use that parking, we would 
significantly increase the amount that we charge for parking uh, to recoup some of that money. Now, what's the average for a parking spot? Well, a, a winter spot in Montpelier is about 100 bucks a month. So if you do the 12, then you're talking $1,200. That's a 24-hour space. Take a long yeah, time, but it gets 350. I mean, it would be less than that, but I mean, yeah. we, would, we would be raising a considerable sure, amount sure. from them, and I would assume they would still want to use it. Yeah, I talked with Steve, and, and they said that I floated, I didn't want to catch them um, watching it on TV, that we were taking their parking lot away, and <laughs> the idea of renting spaces from them seemed, you know, Steve was perfectly, so one concern that we have to think about, you know, if there's consideration of not having to be a parking lot, is that that's actually removing parking spots from up there, which I think is a problem. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Could you say that? If we decided to transform it into green space, that's effectively removing parking spaces from downtown Montpelier that are currently being used, including by downtown employees. So it's just going to add to the parking crunch. And, and I take Andrew's in, point that maybe that's not our financial responsibility, but well, and it is not going to be popular to remove. Well, we're building a huge parking garage downtown. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well. <laughs> and we are not, and like I said, what we're, what we're considering is that we would put paving pretty much on the space that is currently in the mud lot. So we're not talking about adding spaces in case people are thinking, well, you're going to add a parking lot. We're not adding a parking lot. We're taking something that's a mud lot in an eyesore and creating a true parking lot with lines that isn't going to be an eyesore. But I mean, if, if you want to go in a different direction, we can certainly do that. But I just think we need to set aside some money and, and do something. Mm -hmm. you know, I was going to ask, having heard all that, for a little more data. In other words, where's the proof that we need it except on the day you talked about it? I mean, what's the do we have any data that says we actually do need this or we're in trouble? How would we get that? And so I'm a little hesitant with Andrew to put this money into a parking lot that the credit union's going to use. Mm -hmm. Well, if you they use it, they pay for it, though, just to be clear. Even so. Right. And although I'm absolutely all for doing something with that mess. So yes, I think we need some money to do something. But I'm wishing now I knew a little bit more about do we really think we need that parking? Or could we do green space? And could we I find that out? If you consider when it's mud and ice, which I, from my short time this year okay. here, okay. that has been at least two months, if not three, full time periods, we lose, and if it's snowbank time, right? Mm -hmm. We lose approximately 40 to 50 parking spots. So that means our employees can't park here for the most part. Not everybody can fit with students and with, with the employees. And if we have district days, there's not a chance that, <laughs> that all of our employees can park here. Okay. Um, so if that's, if it, you know, it's debatable. Is that important or not? That is absolutely debatable. Is that a, is parking spots a right <laughs> to, it's hard to collect data because we don't assign parking spots. So, so there's a period in the winter, this two, three, yeah. three month period where it can't be used essentially. Spring, winter, yeah. And there are other spots that can't be used because. During the winter, yes, because of how they plow the, the parking. The, and maybe that can be fixed. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it, it can be better problem. next year. I mean, to, to be blunt, we will not build our way out of a parking problem. We will be here in five years. If we build a parking lot out there, we'll be here in five years saying there's no parking because people will who otherwise might not park in the park in the mud lot will say, hey, there's a new parking spot. I'm gonna park there to use the bike path or use whatever. I and mean, it's 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 we don't have a lot of control over our parking lot. We don't we've got probably six cars that show up to eight cars that show up on any given school day to play pickleball in the middle of the day. And get mad at us if they don't have a parking spot. <laughs> Let us know. Uh -oh. <laughs> So it's, it's, not, it's not an easy, it's not an easy topic because, as I say, um, so there's it's, no it's funny, a lot of cities now, when you build a hotel, and I think Burlington has gone this way, they don't have parking requirements because they know no matter what you build, you don't have to build enough. So they make it so tough that people will be forced to carpool because they know they can't find a parking spot. Um, like I say, that doesn't make the conversation any easier, the decision making any easier. But if 
we knew that we had 20 public folks from the, on, a, on a nice sunny day like today, 10 of them going for a walk there or using the bike path or playing pickleball, that's 20 spots. But for those 20 spots, we want to, what do we do about those? So there's no decal or there's nothing? There no isn't. And we certainly could. I mean, we certainly, we could. I would, these guys don't. <laughs> but we could certainly make a more stringent parking piece, right, for next school year to collect, to be able to collect data because we don't currently, right? Somebody would have to do that, which is fine. We can make that, yeah, we can make that happen. Um, and you it's could not use an automated system. You, you could use like a laser system of sorts, probably. A laser system? Maybe that wouldn't work. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it was, like, like, I mean, like, our, our, our state uh, forest and parks um, service uses that on trailheads, for example. To count people. To count people. And there, there are uh, parking uh, facilities that use similar automated systems. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I know in Essex, we, at the high school in Essex, they have parking permits. Stickers, yeah. And mm -hmm. They actually charge people for the parking permits because they have to print them out. They have to maintain a roster of them, linking that to the car so they know whether it's legit. We had two part-time parking lot attendants, and we would go out there and check and call tow trucks and have people tow away. And it was um, super fun. Yeah, I see that as a community yeah. relations nightmare. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah. So. Backing up again, just to, just a touch here, Andrew. In the past, you've talked about um, putting together a capital uh, plan because we now have capital funding. There is an ongoing capital, capital plan. plan yeah. How, where does this fall in the priorities of the capital plan? And it doesn't. Okay. Because I wouldn't I wouldn't want to take anything off. Of, that that yeah. capital plan is um, that's really infrastructure stuff that's needed. That's been perhaps de deferred, and we have built that. And we didn't have this in the plan because we thought it was going to be done for us. Mm -hmm. And so, to your point about priority, we didn't see this as, wow, this is a higher priority than what we've already got on our capital plan. And this amount is more than a full year of our capital plan. So right. we would defer a year and a third worth of requirements if we were to squeeze this in to the capital plan. No, that's not what I'm suggesting. So I no, no, I was no. saying we could use this for the, for those capital plan projects, is what I was thinking. You mean if we didn't put a parking plan in here? Yeah. Oh, because we do have a capital plan. Right. FY20 is 260000 It's projected to go up to like maybe five or $10,000 each year. We just started. This is the first year that we voted for the capital plan. We did have a capital plan, capital fund project in FY19 as well. So we do have an ongoing capital fund um, that we've started building, that we're tweaking, and this was kind of a plate to the party, and we didn't see it as being important enough to bump anything else off the list of the capital fund. No, I wasn't so, suggesting that. I, I, what I was thinking is if we have $350,000 that we want to spend on capital construction, have we considered where this falls in the priorities of our capital plan? Um. <laughs> That's a question I probably should be asking you guys. Um, it's a question, kind yeah. of. Yeah. group. Yeah. I mean, I look at the, you know, the spaces around the middle school and think that that could be a priority for outdoor space that might trump having the, the, the repairs of the middle school, like basketball court and all that. Right. That's a next year's capital plan. But if you bumped it up a year. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> How much would it cost to uh, get two plans? You said this wasn't our plan, this was their plan. And how much would it cost to get a plan for a parking lot, but also to get a plan for a green space? This is going to cost more than I look going to like. I know it already. Mm -hmm. But to get those two plans, if we say we have to do something, right, one thing or another, how much would it cost to get those two and then for the board to continue this discussion about which of those to do? Um, it, would not, it would not take a lot. Um, I 
guess my question would be, would that information help make the decision? That's a good question. Because <laughs> it sounds like you're pretty clear that the parking is about 350000 and yeah, the green space know. is and, significantly And again, less. those, those like, the attended. more money you yeah. spend to find out what you want to do, the better yes. number you can get and the better you can understand it. I, I could have a, I could call a civil engineer tomorrow and say, we got 8,000 square feet, we want to scrape, but I could talk to ECI tomorrow during our construction meeting and say, scrape off six inches and put down topsoil and grass seed, what's that going to cost us? And we need to have a number for us by the afternoon. And nice trees. What's that? And nice trees. And nice trees. <laughs> but what, what is and, that? And a fire lane. And you know, you know yeah. that, the back of the envelope stuff can, can be generated. but. But you're if, right. If it was two hundred, if the differential was two hundred thousand dollars, would that change people's minds? Probably not, because that isn't what we've been talking about, particularly about the money. Except that we'd spend it some other way if we didn't spend it. You know, since the credit union is such an integral part to this whole discussion. You, know, you said anecdotally, Steve has mentioned to you that yes, they'll be interested in the future and continuing to use the spaces and they would probably pay more. Have we thought about having like a formal lease that they're willing to commit to you know, 10 years of paying this amount or? We have, a, we have an agreement with them now that we'll have we, to discontinue and then we would have to create a new one. But yes, we certainly would. So there is a, like, okay. I didn't realize that there's a binding agreement already. Yeah, and but we were looking at adjusting that if they were to do the project so that we could get that all in writing, um, but then that kind of fell through. So what we would have to do is we would have to notify them that we would want to discontinue the agreement that's in place because there's a termination amount, so, or a termination period of time, and we would do that, and then we would do the project, and then we would do a new agreement with them at a higher price per space. And that would be, and that decision to let them know is November 1st, there are about 60 days. But by November 1st, we need to, if we, if we are going to change our agreement with them, we need to let them know. And ideally, even sooner than that, as soon as we make sense. So I think I need to get a sort of sense of the board because this discussion started with an ask for a specific action and I'm hearing a lot of interest in more information or more time. So does anyone want to make a motion for the commitment for the amount for the parking lot? And does anyone want to voice support for putting this off? And it's kind of, I mean, it, it, what I'm clear, yeah, what I'm hearing is that we'd like to continue this discussion with a little bit more um, specifics around the options, maybe some more specifics from the credit union. Maybe everyone had a little bit more time to think about it. So from the recused pretend, person. Pretend I'm sitting over there with Andrew and Grant. Um, just timing-wise, so the grant that Friends of Luminuski has to do design stormwater uh, treatment on the campus the designs have to be final by early August, which means the engineers need to know what they're designing well before early August. And right now, this is definite, if this is going to be paved, this is definitely a priority for design. If it's, if it's gonna be turned into green space, it's a whole other kettle of fish. Um, but it would be, if, if, the board doesn't make a decision. You cannot make a decision, and that is fine. I understand that. But if you don't, then we will have to shift those resources elsewhere. And this is with regard to stormwater projects at Montpelier High School? Correct. And what you're saying is, you know, adding, adding a parking lot like this would, you know, even incorporate the design of that stormwater system. Correct. This into that. So. Well, so we have, we have funding to design three interventions. There are 13 opportunities identified on the campus, but if this is going to be paved, it's obviously a major opportunity. So what do you view as the timeline, Andrew, for when the board needs to make it? If, um, I, if you had said, one way or the other, uh, I would have gone out, written up an RFP, gotten some proposals, 
had some preliminary meetings by September to kind of get a sense of where we're heading. We give the engineers a couple. We want to be out to bid um, by January to get our best prices because we probably bundle this with the work at Main Street Middle. So it needs to be. It needs to be soon. It needs to be within the next six weeks at least, maybe four. My general, my general thought on this um, is not one of indecision. My general thought is I'd love to see us try to optimize the space that we have. Um, the SECU and their eight cars, if, if, you know, that's not, I don't think that that should be a major factor in this decision. And I think we should consider, you know, how could we take $350,000 and apply some of it here to create outdoor opportunities for our students and community and take the rest of that money to uh, enhance educational and recreational opportunities for our students, whether through capital construction projects or otherwise. That's my general sentiment on this, but I understand this is a board decision and I'm just one component of that. So. Can I just ask a clarifying question though? So are you, are you saying so just leave it as money? No. No, that's not. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying is use some of the money to turn this into green space that can be used uh, for any number of recreational opportunities by students, by the community, and take you know, most of this money and apply it to an area of need um, for our students. Um, I, was not, clear. <laughs> I, I was not... Um, I was not coming here just to be clear. I was not coming here trying to find out if you'd be willing to give up all your fund balance. This this was just for this project. That I, I mean, I think it's great to have fund balance. It bails us out a lot. So I was not looking for ideas on how we can use up our fund balance, just to be clear. Um, the 350, if that's not what you want to do, that's fine. Um, but we would need a consensus on are we going with green space or are we going with paved? Once we know the answer to that, we can come back then and, and tell you, okay, then this is what we need from fund balance to try to make that happen. Yeah, and, and so, so to be clear, the question before the board would not be what to do with the money if it weren't spent on the question is parking lot. I, I understand that's there. the immediate question. Uh, I'm, but I get ready, just to be clear. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. that. So yeah. I have another question that you might be able to answer, given the wintertime problem with parking. It, um, I'd be willing to spend some money to move the snow. And I say that laughingly, but the senior center is a good example of the fact that they plow the snow to the back of the lot and you lose a whole bunch of parking spaces. And the issue is moving the snow that now takes up the parking spaces to somewhere else. And it probably wouldn't cost $350,000, is what I'm thinking. Could we solve the parking problem in another manner? I don't know that. You could say to me, no, I know this This problem. is my first year with regards to the snow management, but uh, I won't say anecdotally, no. <laughs> but according to talking with Tom Allen, I think, they, I think the snow management was not optimum this year. I think it has been better in the past. I think we've lost a good six, eight spots. As well as so whether, it was, whether it was snow tones, snowstorms piling on top of each other or something, but I think I, I, it was a bad. It was a bad year for snow management. That's um, that we certainly would be more conscious of next year. That's like seventy-five percent of the spots that the SECU isn't no. using. So. so I'm with. I tend to go with Andrew and do a, a green space, not do nothing. I think we have to do something. Do mm -hmm. a green space, but then figure out the snow and do it better. So what we have before us, though, is whether what decision we're going to make on the 350000 proposal for paving the parking lot that's currently being used as a mud lot. Yeah, this wasn't a consent agenda item. This was no, just something I that I was um, suggesting you would make as a motion. I so, um, I mean, we can change the proposal on the fly. I mean, if, if the consensus is green space, then I could, I could say, well, how about increasing the committed fund balance by $50,000 to 364 that would allow us to go down that path. And it might be enough, it might even be more, because you know what happens. If we don't use all the money, I come back and say, we're going to give it back to the fund balance because right. we don't need it all. So if you said 50000 and we want a green space, we could start marching down that road. 
see where how far we get, and if we, for some reason 50 isn't enough, it might be. If 50 is enough, I could come back and ask for more. If 50 is too much, I would give it back when the project is done and say, hey, it sure. only cost us 35, so I'm asking you to put 15 back into uncommitted fund balance, which I've done in the past um, with projects. My only reservation is that's a lot of money for not really knowing what else might be on your list as priorities. And it's just being kind of sprung on me tonight. I don't know. The parking, the full just, amount yeah, for the parking lot. Yeah, the full amount for the parking lot to want and make a decision on tonight when I really... It's hard to prioritize it it's because hard. it wasn't on our radar on it's our radar either no, because really we thought was. it was already getting done. And then, which, yeah, we were ready in our heads with the credit union doing so much of this, at least in my opinion. <laughs> and so were we. So I, I know this is a bit of a surprise. I just... And to me, the, and maybe this was the kind of the lazy way out. To me, instead of trying to figure out where it fell in the priorities, because we already have looked at all those priorities. Sure. Instead mm -hmm. of trying to squeeze in there and see what are, where the dominoes all fall, the idea was, well, we've, we've got the fund balance. We could just not mess with priorities at all sure. and just take care of it out of fund balance. No, no. Harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. um, but 350 is a big number. And if we wanted to do green space, hey, I'm all for green space. Um, I, I will tell you there are there are times when there's no parking. Oh, I know basketball but games, music like Andrew, stuff all the time. Yeah. And all yeah, the time. plays or mm -hmm. performances. But like Andrew said, if you build, it's like storage. You know, if you build you more, it's, it's you're never gonna have enough. So I'm not a I'm not advocating one way or another, but I am advocating that we decide one way or the other. If that makes any sense. And I, I would encourage the board to think about what we talked about earlier when Andrew pointed out that when you take something away from the community that they view as theirs, which mm -hmm. I would argue that that's something, I bet this parking lot would be fall under that. Yeah. Um, will you have a major... We hear about it for sure. Yeah, a major mm -hmm. challenge with the community. And, and again, and I'm kind of with these guys. I, I just want something done with it because I don't like when somebody drives up to the school and that's the first thing they say. <laughs> yeah. right. you know, I mean, I would say that I'm a little bit concerned about the, the six of us that are here. Well, mm -hmm. actually, it's five because we're still abstaining, deciding tonight that there's not going to be parking there anymore. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, although we have a full schedule on the retreat, I mean, we do have the retreat in two weeks, so we have a chance to warn this one issue to make the final decision. And it sounds like that works with the time frame, June 19th. Does that if you get a final yeah, decision yeah, yeah, one way or yeah. the other? Um, so I, I, can, I can, in that time period, mark up a, a drawing and get it to ECI. You know, said Joe's, Joe's very helpful, and it won't be anything you're going to want to, you know, Grant's going to come back and he's going to add 30% to it and say, if, we, if we're over, we'll give the money back. But I think we can get you at least a better sense of that, because if I'm totally wrong and the number comes back at 250, that might change people's minds. Right. If it comes back at 50, it may change some minds. I think that information is important. I also think the opportunity for um, interest people to weigh in, in between now and then, it's putting out the fact that this is under consideration, we're ending that as a parking area. The other we should hear from the community. People, well, hear from people the have strong opinions both ways. On yeah. I think we should have some opportunity for those to be aired, and then we'll make the decision. I think, I think though, that it would be the what we're talking about here what is under consideration is not to leave the mud lot. What is under consideration yeah. is to turn this into green space that can be used for recreational purposes by students, by the community, or to do a hybrid where you have recreational space and you have a 40 car parking lot roughly. And those are the two options that we're considering. We're not considering doing nothing at all. But that's my understanding. So that's yes. Is everyone okay with putting this off for one more? Oh, yeah. Please. Well, one last okay. piece that it was a bigger concern when it was a larger parking lot, but there is a safety issue. We, you have public parking on your property that you can't really see. Uh, we're planning, we're hoping to get a camera out there, but you've got... What do you mean you can't see? I'm sorry. Well, most people when they're coming into the parking lot, the majority of our parking goes past the high school administrative office and there it's there's a lot of passive mm -hmm. eyes out there. My office, Libby's office, you know, we kind of look out there. That's that was one of the issues that 
uh, was raised when it was a larger lot. It's still it's, it's less of a, it's less of an issue when it's smaller, but it's still an issue. You've got a public coming in and using your lot, and you really don't have much supervision of it, and you don't know what's going on. Um, the other things we we were warned about is too much vegetation from the police chief. Because they can't see from the road? Oh. Yeah. Could, and provides hiding spots. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's so fruit, dangerous when it's fruit trees that are money. separated, kind of like on the state house lawn, kind of thing. <laughs> Put Tom Salo to work. I, I do okay. want to say to the both of you, this was a logical conclusion from where we had been before. So thank you for doing this. It's just that before, we thought somebody else was going to come in, pay this, pay for it, and they wanted it. And we never really had this discussion. So it's I'd not your love, fault. I'd love to see a picture of what that what that was the first year it was put in, because I guarantee you it was 20 feet shallower than it is now, and every day it creeps further and further. Oh, further I'm sure. Further yeah. Further yeah. So if we don't do something, it's the just whole front yard. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate your time. I'm sorry to spring it on you, but I'm glad at least we're having the conversation, and I appreciate the, that you're taking it on, and we'll. So what you think? Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both very much. Summer dates, so folks can uh, get these on their calendars. So uh, June 19th is a full day, just so everyone remembers. Yeah. Starting in the morning, full day mm -hmm. retreat. Mm -hmm. um, Graph, right? Nine o'clock, yeah, till? Nine o'clock? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yep. Lunch and provided Tina and around five. Got the historical society for us. Oh so great. You did. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. That was a nice space. Uh, there are space? many problems with all of the other normal in the pavilion. Oh, okay. Oh right. There's many problems with all of what would be the normal summer meeting dates, um, including a wide range of vacation and um, one of them would be July third, which of course we can't meet in up there on July third. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so the proposal from the chair, vice chair, and the superintendent is three meetings this summer, July 24th, August 14th, and August 28th. July 20th. Can you say those one more time? July 24th, August 14th, and August 28th. And all of those would be regular starting at 6.30 board meetings. Right. If it, August 29th is the first day of school? Yeah, I think so. Yes, it is. <laughs> huh. So they'll go out to the whole board, since some people are here, um, by email too, but that's the plan. And if after this meeting, um, which, many people can't make them. I mean, please, I, I would say we don't need to do it right now, but like we'll put it out in an email to the whole board, and then if, if you can respond about your availability, if it turns out that those dates are impossible, of course, they'll have to be revisited. Um, which of, do we know which of them will be in Roxbury? Mm -hmm. Well, since we are doing it was supposed to be every fourth, and it's right. supposed to be the, the 19th, of June was supposed to be the board, the Roxbury board meeting, but I think what we were talking about today is just have a full day right. board meeting and then not have it in Roxbury, so it would make sense that the first board meeting in July there starts out in Roxbury. In Roxbury. So the 24th in Roxbury. How far of a drive is it from Roxbury to Middlebury? Ryan. <laughs> it depends on the time of year and which gaps are open. But. Summer. <laughs> summer. In the summer. July 24th. Like 40 minutes? No, I'll look it up. I'm just. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think mean, that might be. So that's kind of in like 35, 40 minutes. It's not too bad. No. Okay. <laughs> the only other thing left on the agenda is the executive session. Uh, for which we need two motions. Do we have a motion to find that discussing contract negotiations in open session would put the board at a disadvantage? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing contract negotiations? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed?